Well, what's up guys? Chris Brown from Train Boston coming at you with another wellness moment. Today, I want to talk to you guys about triggers. I also call these catalysts. Um, and I want to start this conversation off with a quote from Sun Tzu and from his book, The Art of War. I'm sure many of you had read this. The quote I want to really hone in on is the one where he talks about victory and knowledge. He says, and I quote, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you will need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer defeat. If you know neither, you will suc succumb in every battle. And I paraphrase there a little bit. But what he's trying to say is you need to know about yourself and you need to know about what you're trying to accomplish in order to succeed in life. In our case, I don't really like to define things as enemies. I think it's a little bit of a negative experience to talk about food as a uh, as, a, as an enemy or fitness as an enemy or your body fat as an enemy. We really don't need to demonize those things so much as just look at them realistically. We do, however, need to know about them. And what I'm going to get into today is knowing about ourself and how we respond to triggers or catalysts. Um, so as I've said before, we are basically just a set or a series of behaviors that we do over and over again. Some of these things are good, some of them are bad, some of them are kind of in between. Um, but almost all these, if not all of these, have these triggers or catalysts that set you off towards that path. And we're gonna, we're gonna kind of lay out how you figure out what your triggers are and then how you work to overcome them or work around them. So what I always do whenever I try to help somebody figure out a, a wellness issue is I go through that, that chain link. That's my analogy, I use my chain links of wellness I go through that chain link and we look at try to see which one of those links is, is missing. Which one's a little rusty, which one's a little too thick, uh, which one really needs some work. And again, those chain links are nutrition, hydration, physical fitness and restorative movement, mental wellness and your nervous system, breathing patterns, and your sleep. All right, now they're all super important, but we probably can't focus on all of those at once and I don't recommend it. So. What chain link is looking like it needs some work? Where are we struggling to succeed? We're gonna get into that SMART goal here. We're getting specific. What do we really need? And then also, what can we handle right now? What is attainable? Don't bite off more than you can chew. If you're trying to fix five different things at once, you're probably not gonna fix anything at the end of it. It's just too much. You might even make things worse by becoming more stressed out. That's not good. Um, so let's just pick one of them and focus. So likely you have a lot of a lot of things that you could work on, but we're, we're gonna pick one out. A lot of you might have trouble with this. I know I do sometimes. It's our sleep. So we're gonna look at that, that last chain link I listed, sleep, probably one of the most important things. And we're gonna try to work on that, okay? Let's figure out what our triggers are and how we can be better at it. So how can we, how can we make sure we get things done? Well, I always say track your progress. Make sure it's measurable, back to that SMART goal, the M, measurable, track your progress. We may not be able to identify the triggers without logging things. You may really have no idea or you'll just forget when you realize it. So we're gonna become relevant from there. All right, that's the R in these SMART goals, okay? And we're gonna figure out what things we should log. Uh, well, I usually tell people, let's log our sleep and let's log the emotions behind everything around it. So we're gonna look at the quality, quantity, and duration of sleep. Of course, those are important. And we're gonna look at uh, what I do right before bed as well. Um, and then we're gonna look at the emotions around those things, okay? So how do I feel before I go to bed? How do I feel um, even before that? How do I feel um, for the few hours before I go to bed? Then how do I feel right before bed? How do I feel right when I wake up? And then how do I feel a little while after that as well, okay? So what am I doing right when I get out of bed? Those things and how you feel will influence how your overall quality, quantity, and duration of sleep are. And as you know, if you don't get good sleep, a lot of things change. So that's why I'm really picking this one out right now. It's something a lot of people don't focus enough on. So let's take, take some examples here. Um, so right before I go to bed, am I working on work? Am I doing a late night project that stresses me out? Am I discussing work? Am I talking to a coworker or talking to my wife? Am I venting maybe? Uh, are we doing that right before bed? I don't know, that's maybe something to look at. 
am I doing bills late at night or thinking about bills late at night? Am I trying to plan things out that I probably should have done earlier? Is that stressing me out? Is there a doctor's appointment you're going to that maybe you're worried about? Maybe you don't like needles. Maybe you're having a surgical procedure that makes you super anxious. Um, are you eating late at night? Are you eating past dinner time? Did you just have a really late dinner or really hearty dinner? Um, do you mindlessly eat in front of a TV or in front of a, sc a screen? Do you emotionally eat because you're sad or happy or you're at a party? Did you drink alcohol? Um, did you watch a TV show that really got you going? Maybe it got you thinking, maybe it made you scared it was a horror movie, um, or maybe it was a video game or a book. All those things can stimulate your brain in different ways. Um, did you get into an argument with someone? Maybe you're on Reddit or Twitter typing up a storm, getting mad, or maybe you were at home with your, with your wife or significant other and you got really into it and that, that set you off emotionally. These things are all triggers and they're all catalysts for behaviors. Now, not only will they screw up your behaviors, which will then create issues with your sleep, but they start to become regular things. Your body gets used to that emotional response, that elevated sympathetic response. That in itself, not only stops you from falling asleep initially, but creates this fragmented sleep that even if you feel like you slept for seven to eight hours, it might lower your quality enough that you're not doing so great later in the day. And you'll recognize that through tracking. You say, how do I feel right when I get up? And then how do I feel a little while after I get up? And what, do I, what am I doing? If you're one of those people that takes you forever to feel awake, takes you hit the snooze button five times, you're probably not getting great quality sleep, even if you were in bed for eight to 10 hours. Um, we generally say only seven to eight hours is, is most people's sweet spot, but it's got to be good quality sleep. So now we, we, we figured out a lot of those triggers. We wrote it all down. We tracked it. We were really diligent about doing that, but then we need to come up with a plan. So we're into the T. We're onto the, the last part of the SMART. Um, we got the specific, we got the measurable, we got the attainable. All right. We got the relevant. And now we're at time. I, I say time and tell, and I even wrote talk in there today because it seemed relevant. Um, so tell someone who can help. Again, that right now is probably someone in your house, uh, maybe your significant other, maybe it's your, your kids even, uh, or, or a friend you can talk to via phone or Skype or Zoom or whatever. Um, but try to, to bring somebody into it who can help. And then maybe they need to be part of the, part of the help. Um, if your significant other is with you every single night and they're trying to get you to stay up late or they're causing arguments or or whatever, they are definitely a person who needs to be part of that conversation. And then talk to maybe a professional, someone who's a wellness coach or a sleep coach or a doctor, and uh, maybe also an emotional spotter. Again, coming back to that friend, uh, someone who can help you out, and, and maybe you don't need a ton of advice, but you just need someone to be there for you. Make sure you tell those people because they can't help you if they don't know. And uh, it's, it's hard for some people, especially us guys. We, try to act tough all the time, but make sure you're being realistic about what you can handle. If you don't know about this stuff, it's really tough for you to change it, especially if those behavioral patterns have been around for a long time. And then let's come up with a time that we can get this done. So we, we have a little goal. Hopefully you've created that SMART goal. Um, for example, maybe it, it is to get a full five days in a row of good quality sleep, and we define quality by not waking up multiple times in the night and feeling rested in the morning. Um, and then you take that goal and you say, I want to achieve this. I want to be at that point within three, four weeks, say a month, put a date on the calendar, track everything down and see where you're at. And again, if you didn't get there, we can go back to the same plan. Let's try to find those triggers. Let's, let's look at the, or let's look at the chain links, then find those triggers and create a plan that's measurable and relevant to you and put a time constraint on it. Every single time you have an issue, you can come back to this plan, all right? This is literally a roadmap for how you solve problems for your wellness. I just took sleep as an example today. If you have any more questions, however, please let me know. You can list it in the comments below or contact me through my Train Boston email. Um, and you can otherwise just ask, ask around for it. I got a lot of people, a lot of resources that I can send your way and uh, we can get you where you need to be. Again, if you like the video, let you like these resources, please like and subscribe to our channel, hit that bell button, and it would be greatly appreciated. 
Uh, for more content, look at my previous videos on my wellness moments. Thank you very much.